In today's webinar, I will be covering how you can apply fly cutting with Sigma Nest for your CNC lasers. So, what is fly cutting? Fly cutting, not to be confused with the milling operation, is a CNC laser process where the head is continuously moving and cutting. The laser will perform a soft pierce as it approaches the contour and then fully engage the head once it reaches it. As it reaches the end of the contour, it will return the head to a low power state and continue to the next contour in the sequence. It will do this until the pattern is complete. The major benefit to fly cutting is the improved speed in which contours can be cut. The machine is continuously moving without having to stop and pierce the material. The unfortunate drawback of fly cutting is that it's limited to only certain types of geometries. The most common where fly cutting excels are pattern grids of circles, rectangles, and hexagons. Before we go over how to implement fly cutting, let's go over what is required to use the feature. To apply cutting in Sigma Nest, you will need the following. First, you will need a seat of Sigma Nest with the Advanced NC Profiling Module enabled. This module is included with the Techno and Power Pack packages of Sigma Nest. Next, your CNC laser must have the ability to perform fly cutting. If you don't know if your machine can perform fly cutting, consult your machine's user manual or machine reseller to see if it can. And finally, your Sigma Nest post processor needs to have fly cutting enabled and set up. If it does not or you're not sure, the Sigma Nest support team can assist you with getting that implemented. With the requirements covered, let's see how we can put this feature to work. Fly cutting in Sigma Nest can be applied in the part tab as well as the nested NC tab. To access the feature, simply click on the fly cut button in either menu to access the feature. If you cannot find the fly cutting button, use the IntelliSearch feature at the bottom left of the Sigma Nest menu to help you search for it. One thing to consider with fly cutting is that the feature is limited by the material's thickness. If the material is thicker than what the machine can handle, the fly cutting button may disappear from the toolbar. If you attempt to apply fly cutting for a material that is thicker than what the machine can handle, an error message will pop up letting the user know that, in, that fly cutting cannot be applied. The limit is defined in the post and can be modified to accommodate your machine's capabilities based upon the user manual or machine reseller's recommendation. Now, let's review the fly cut settings in Sigma Nest and apply it to some parts. Now that we are back in Sigma Nest, let's go over the process of using fly cut groups. Fly cut groups are set up within part mode, but can be toolpath in either part mode or nested NC. To apply a fly cut group, navigate to part mode and select the feature in the toolbar. You will notice on the left side that the feature tree shows some groups that have been applied already. If we click on them, it will highlight which contours have a group applied. To create a fly cut group, pick your selection option, then the contour, and then hit the checkbox to add it to the list. From here, you can modify the parameters about that group, such as the profile type, whether it's a grid of rectangular entities, which it is here, circular, such as a fan cover, grid of circles, or grid honeycomb, uh, such as a group of hexagons. After that, you can change the start position of the four rectangular corners of the grid, the direction that you would like to process it, whether it be left to right or bottom to top, the sequence, whether it be zigzag or typewriter, the dropout order, whether it be progressively or delay final cut, and how you would like to handle curve, whether it be in control, computer, or default of the machine. Once you're done here, you can then hit apply, or if this setting uh, should be applied to all groups, you can hit apply to all, and then the entire list will have these settings applied. To exit the menu, simply hit the green checkbox. From here, Go into part mode and select the drop down for auto NC. 
and then make sure apply fly cut is turned on and hit OK. Same enough so that it goes through the process of automatically applying auto tool, uh, auto NC to each of the contours as well as fly cut groups. As you can see, Sigma has processed each fly cut group independently of each other and even allow for the processing of fly cut groups that are not in the orthogonal direction of x or y axes. Let's move on to a harder example. Let's select this fan part and then fly cut each of the rings within the part. To accomplish this, let's go to the fly cut groups. Select all the contours. And then use the deselect option to deselect the entities we don't want to fly cut. The plus icon here allows you to select individual contours as you feel fit. Next, we'll create a group. Select on the group, and then change the profile type to be circular. Keep these settings, and then if our machine has a macro that we can apply here, then we can select the macro from the drop down list. In the case of my Amazic Optiplex, I don't have a macro for this type of profile, so none is selected. At this point, I'll hit apply. Hit the green checkbox, and finally toolpath the part. As you can see, you can use fly cut groups to have better control over fly cutting internal contours to maximize your machine's potential. With the release of Sigma S version 21 came improvements to the fly cutting feature. Sigma Nest can now apply fly cutting to rectangular patterns that are not aligned in the X and Y axes, as well as circular patterns such as fan covers. On top of the new types of features supported, fly cutting can now be grouped into separate patterns to have better control over how the features are processed. By grouping fly cutting contours, each group can be independently processed based upon the type of pattern. You can have a circular fan cover pattern with a rectangular hexagon pattern on the same part and break them into separate groups. Fly cutting groups can also allow the implementation of special macros for Mazak and Amata lasers. These macros significantly reduce the number of lines of code needed and make the most out of your machine's capabilities. Let's see how we can use fly cut groups within Sigma Nest. Now that we are here in Sigma Nest, let's go over how we can apply fly cutting. I've gone ahead and imported some parts for this example. To apply fly cutting within part mode, let's select on a part, and then add some tool pathing. From here, we can select on the fly cut feature to pull up the fly cutting menu. Within this menu, you can adjust the distance between rapids for arcs and lines, the alignment tolerance for grids and other entities, the soft pierce lead-in and lead-up length, and finally, the delay of the final removal cut to ensure that all of the fly cut patterns drop at the same time. If we set some values here, Sigma-S can set these as a default for this machine, material, and thickness for the future. As you can see, Sigma-S has optimized the tool pathing applied so that the laser head can move in straight lines as it rapids from entity to entity. This same feature can also be found within the nested NC tab as well. Let's clear tool pathing from the part. Go back to the Workspace tab and create a new task with that part.
Let's quickly nest apart. And then we'll we apply some tool pathing to the part. In this case, I'll do it manually. We can see that the fly cut option here is enabled with the settings I saved as default within park mode. And if we zoom in, you'll see that the uh, tool pathing is once again optimized. However, fly cutting is limited based upon the material's thickness. If we change the task to be a thicker material, You'll notice that when we go to the Nesting NC tab, the fly cut feature is missing. If we search for it here in the IntelliSearch function, and then try and access it, CBS will throw up an error saying that fly cut is not set up for parts thicker than the thickness in the post processor. If you feel that your fly cut thickness limit is not correct for your machine, consult your user manual or machine reseller and we can get that corrected in post if the value is not correct. Now, let's learn about what's new in Sigma S in version 21 for fly cutting. Before I close out this week's webinar, let's review what was covered. First, Fly cutting is a CNC laser process that can quickly and effectively cut internal patterns without the need to pierce every contour. Then, I went over what was needed from SigmaNest, your machine, and your post processor to use fly cutting. And finally, I went over how to apply fly cutting in SigmaNest and then the new fly cut groups added in version 21. At this point in time, I would like to thank you for watching our webinar on fly cutting. If you have any questions, please let us know by either asking them now or by asking our support team. You can reach them via our support phone line, our support email inbox, and our Connect site.